Welcome to episode 147 of Level Up Your Career with APMG. Welcome to 60 minutes of live Q&A where your questions drive the show. My name is Stefan Brendel, and on behalf of APMG, I'm your host today. My colleagues Adriana and Ella are in the LinkedIn and YouTube chat. So please let us know your name and the city from where you join in. They will post a link for you to vote up the questions that you would most like answered, and of course, for you to add your own question. If your question is selected, your name will appear in the credits at the end of the show. So get yours in early and stay with us to see that happen. Today's topic is how to become an agile leader. Agility is one of the most sought after and relevant skills to have to start your project management career. And I'm delighted to be joined by a panel of experts today who will share their views and experience for you to help you advancing your career. Sounds interesting? Well, then let's get started and meet our panel. Hello, panel. <laughs> Malini Hello. Jaya Ganesh is a highly experienced business relationship manager who specializes in nurturing high performance BRMs and teams. She's joining us from Melbourne, Victoria today. As a regular keynote speaker, she brings her authentic self to every situation and is a huge inspiration to all of us. Welcome back to Level Up, Malini. Thank you very much, Stefan and, and everyone at APMG. I'm delighted to be on this panel um, with, with my uh, friends and I'd like to extend a warm welcome to everyone who's tuning in from around the world for this exciting conversation. All right. Thanks, uh, Malini. We also have um, Johan Bota, the CEO of Get It Right. He's a lifelong lean advocate who has built a career on helping organizations change for the better. Specializing in building digital age capability, Johan describes himself as a digital change provocateur. Johan is joining us from Johannesburg in South Africa. Welcome back, Johan. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you also, APMG, for the opportunity once again to share. Uh, I'm quite sure we're going to have a lot of fun because it's a very interesting topic today. It is indeed. Also with us is Vazim Zia Chaudhry. He's the CEO and Chief Trainer of Technologica in London. Wazim serves as client serves as clients to achieve their strategic objectives through his leadership, management, and excellent training delivery skills for agile project and program management, change management, agile change agent, to mention a few. Welcome, Wazim. Thank you very much, Stefan, and thank you, everybody. It's always great to be on these Level Up series episodes. So looking forward to add uh, my two uh two cents words uh opinions over here all right thanks Razim. also with us is adrian pine he's the director of consulting at pine consulting and a fellow of the uk association of project management which is a community he has been active since the early 90s a champion of diversity and inclusion adrian is an accomplished author of agile beyond it and a key supporter of Level Up. He's joining us from the county of Dorset. Hello, Adrian. Hello there, and uh, hello the rest of the panel and everyone who's uh, tuned into this. Thank you for that. Uh, yeah, looking forward to today and uh, maybe helping to dispel, dispel a few myths around agility uh, whilst we're at it. Goodness knows there are plenty of them around. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. And completing our panel today is Julian Solomon. He's Director of Training and Project Management at Thought Nation in Johannesburg. Passionate about teaching and learning, Julian really invests in his courses to bring the content to life for every learner. Welcome back, Julian. Thank you very much, Stefan. It's great to be with all of you again today. Lovely panel. And I'm looking forward to um, helping with some challenging questions and, and helping our, our learners and our listeners today. Yeah, and we have lots of good questions uh, <clears throat> that people have uh, put into the Slido link, and you see that link um, 
um, in in the chat um, how he, where you can vote questions and you can add your own. And our question master for today is my colleague Suchitra Jacob, who's joining us from the city of Bangalore in India. Welcome, Suchitra. And may we have our first question, please. Thank you, Stefan. And hi to the panelists and our viewers. Yes, of course, you can have the first question. So our first question is actually from Adrian, our panelist. What does leadership agility look like? So I want to see some hands panel <clears throat> and uh, Adrian, I come to you last. Okay. If you don't mind. So I will start with Johan, Julian, and then Malini. I think one of the, the, the biggest challenges for industrial age organizations, when they start talking about becoming agile, um, is that the role of, of, of management and organizations change as a result. Um, and, and the cool thing is it's, it's a good change because the focus becomes more on how you take the organization forward, how you help everybody in the organization to achieve their goals and objectives, um, and in fact, how you become a servant leader, how you become an enabler um, of, of outcomes in the organization instead of a, a uh, policeman. All right. Thanks. Uh, thanks, uh, um, Johan. And let's hear from Julian. Well, uh, leadership agility is really being able to adapt to change very, very quickly and make decisions quickly. And then very importantly, to be able to inspire and in in empower others to do the same. So it's about having the right levels of flexibility, um, strategic thinking, very importantly, but then I think more than anything, collaboration and communication within your environment and building those, those aspects. All right. Thanks, uh, Julian. And uh, Malini, your views, please. I concur with everything that uh, Johan and Julian have said. Uh, to me, um, leadership agility is grounded in courage because, um, you know, it takes uh, it takes a lot of courage to to be able to challenge your assumptions, um, you know, to change status quo, uh, to accept that there might be, um, you know, uh, a different way of doing things. Maybe, you know, what we have considered all, of, all along as being valuable is no longer valuable. And, you know, adopting a more agile approach will help us to unpack all that. It takes a lot of, um, lot of uh, courage and grit. All right. Thanks, Malini. Now, Adrian, you raised that question about uh, leadership agility. Uh, I mean, it, isn't it also about uh, psychological safety for people who have to go through changes, that that's where leadership is important? I think it certainly is. Um, and I think we're probably going to come back to that that theme probably two or three times for some of the questions that we've got. Mm. The, the, the couple of quick uh, points I wanted to make is, uh, two kind of aspects of what agility, leadership agility looks like. Um, first, first of all, I think it's, um, I mean, as a, I've been a project professional for more than 30 years. And for many years, I was essentially as a project manager, control freak. I had to have my hand, you know, in touch and in tight control of absolutely everything. And that's kind of the opposite of agility because you, you don't trust people, et cetera, et cetera, you know, everything else, because, you know, you're, you're not you're not giving them the freedom they need and teams need to go off and do what they like. Mm. So if you look at adapting the Agile Manifesto, which is kind of where this comes, where this all comes from, what in at the one level agility looks like in leadership is what I call hands-off leadership. It means that you're only um, active with a team. Um, when you need to intervene as a leader or, uh, or or indeed you're asked to otherwise you, the, your role as a, as as a as a leader at whatever level uh, is is to uh, say okay folks uh, you're the right people you know what you've got to do you know why you're doing it you've got the right skills go ahead and you let them do it um, but you're keeping in touch just enough, um, uh, and that might come back to that, that lovely phrase, just enough. 
The other aspect of agility is something I've that, that uh, of what agility looks like, uh, uh, leadership agility looks like, arises from goodness knows how many professional reviews I've done of project managers, and it's and and it's about adaptability, uh, which I think Julian mentioned, and mm -hmm. uh, it, because there is no one style of leadership that is right in all circumstances. And great professionals know this and adapt their leadership styles to given uh, situations, to teams, to projects, and even to individuals. And that is a great demonstration of leadership agility, the ability to know when to adapt and what to adapt to. All right, thanks, Adrian. It, it, it's in particular good to hear that you no longer consider be a control freak. Did I get that right? Um, yeah, <laughs> it was leadership too stressful. Agility. Too, too stressful. <laughs> Trust your teams. I can imagine. Um, all right, that was a great question to start with. Uh, Suchitra, how about uh, other questions that we have in the, in the pile? Sure. So we have a question from Andrew. Can I be an agile leader in a non-agile culture? All right. Uh, so we start with Johan, Julian, um, Wazim, and then Adrian. Johan, please. Okay, Stefan, I'm going to give a short answer. Yes. No, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ab absolutely, because if you if you if you actually think about the the role of leadership in in a a, a digital age um it's exactly yeah what we've talked about enabling your people who are subject matter experts to to do their job and do their job well um and you can do that in any organization and by doing that you're actually going to start planting this essential um, um seed of of change within the organization which will m make the adoption of agile easier later down the line all right <clears throat> thanks johan and uh, let's hear from julia i i'd like to can continue with something that milani Melini brought in earlier about courage and and, <coughs> and have being grounded in being courageous in in your environment. So being in in in, in a non agile culture, we're always going to need to take risk, and that's another thing that's very important is being able to manage risk and manage risk effectively and make. But it's all calculated risk based on data, based on engagement, uh, based on a number of different aspects. So absolutely, we can um, be an agile leader in a non agile world. Yeah, all right. Good. And then let's hear from uh, Vazim. Yes, I absolutely agree with everybody over here. Yes, we, we, we can absolutely be um, agile leader in a non-agile culture. As, the, as I often um, actually say in my trainings that I deliver to my delegates, that agile is more of a mindset than, uh, than the process or the methodology itself. So as long as you have the right mindset, uh, perhaps you are going to be absolutely fine and in terms of the agile itself. So there is no reason why you shouldn't be able to demonstrate the agile leadership in a non-agile culture. And of course, it is the it is the need of the R itself that you bring in the agility into an environment. Um, I don't think that there is any environment at the moment which does not need the agile leadership itself or the agility in simple terms. So absolutely, yes, yeah, um, you can be agile leader in a non-agile culture itself and be the, the catalyst to the change itself. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Wazim. Uh, so we have, um, have a lot of agreement here. Adrian, what's your view? Um, I'm just going to bring it back to sort of projects again, and, uh, and uh, I think I'm extending what what uh, mm -hmm. uh, everyone has sort of said so so far. But uh, what I said um, in my first answer was that uh, great project professionals <laughs> actually exhibit agility, um, and most projects operate in organisations that are not um, agile cultures. Uh, so uh, this has been going on for decades. And uh, and yet, um, you know, really good project professionals exhibit agility, whether they realize it or not. Now, you can actually turn that on its head. If you're in an organization where you want to, to actually build a great professional project capability, you can use agility as a model for doing that. 
because it's it's a set of behaviors and approaches to aspire to and to develop people uh, towards. So uh, the, again, <laughs> coming back to Julian, the simple answer is yes. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and also Johan. And Johan. And with jo Johan. Sorry, and, and Johan. Johan and, and it can it can actually happen with Johan that that is yes and that's it, right? <laughs> we, had this, we had this on the last show, right? Okay, good. So let let's have a look at our viewers. So there's Agnieszka uh, from Poland. Hello, Agnieszka. Hello from from the panel. And we have Dada who's in Buckingham in the UK. Hello, Dada. And there's Kenneth. Um, and he's joining us from Nairobi. Um, welcome, and from Ethiopia, Wondimu. So lots of live viewers. And you know what? Live viewers, if you want to have a question to this panel, now is your chance. Now put in that question into Slido, and you won't believe how fast it gets up to this <laughs> panel for you to answer. And the point is, they cannot prepare for your question. So you can, you can get the real truth from them. Right. Um, so, so Chitra, I wonder if we if we have have already um, a, a live question or um, do we have that? We do. That would be great. We do. Great. Yes, we do have a, we do have a question from Jane in Manchester. How important is empowerment as an agile leader? How important is empowerment as an agile leader? So I saw a couple of hands uh, being raised, and I start with Wazim. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. So uh, empowerment is, is the fundamental element of agility itself. Uh, you need to be, uh, be having the empowerment in the agile environment itself. And if, as a leader itself, you should be allowing everything to be happening. Going back to the first question itself and, and relating it over here is that, um, and I'll, I'll use the, um, the principal concept, concept over here of um, uh, management by exception, right? So you need to be in touch with the environment. You need to have the governance in, in place, but you need to allow the people to be empowered enough so that they can do the job. They are the best people to do their job. You need to empower them to do their job, but at the same time, you need to keep uh, your your kind of hands in the in the pot itself to make sure that you can take the reins in your hand and and bring the things back into under your control. Uh, or under the environmental control whenever it is needed to be. So empowerment is a fundamental element. It needs to be in the uh, in the lead, agile leadership, uh, leader itself. Agile leader has to have the empowerment and, and needs to demonstrate it as well. It's, it's, it's not just that you just, uh, just speak about it, but do not talk the talk and walk the walk itself. So it has to be demonstrated at the same time. Very, very important, um, as I mentioned, uh, fundamental ingredient of an agile leader itself. Thank you very much, Wazim. And uh, Adrian, how important is empowerment? It, it, it's, Wazim's completely correct. It's a, it's a critical part of, uh, of, of agility and the set of the behaviors in agility. And I'll give you a quick example because it depends what you mean by empowerment. Some, part, some people think it's d having specific delegated authority and enough to act. Um, but sometimes it's it's actually the culture behind that. Some years ago, I was uh, working at a, a, at an airport and helping them improve how they did projects. And there was an instance where there was a uh, an engineering project, uh, a project manager in the in, in engineering who was running projects overnight uh, because that's the only time you could carry out cert certain works. And uh, on one occasion, um, something went quite badly wrong. And that project manager at about two o'clock in the morning had to make a decision that was certainly outside of her delegated authority. But the, uh, but the alternative to her making a decision on the spot uh, would have been to ring up the, uh, uh, the director of engineering and wait them up and say, I've got this problem. This is what I propose to do. Are you okay with this? So they just took the decision. Uh, so they went beyond their delegated authority. It was the right decision. It was reviewed the next day, and they were supported. And they were able to do that because the culture had been created in which people were trusted. That project manager was trusted to make the right decision. They then had to subsequently justify it. And if they made 
too many wrong decisions, they wouldn't last very long. It was is the is a reality. Mm. But not only was there a delegated authority aspect of empowerment, but there was also a cultural aspect of empowerment. Thanks, Adrian, for sharing a, a real life uh, <laughs> example that you had experienced. And let's hear from Johan. Um, a while ago, Adrian mentioned the the um, agile principles. Um, and for me, one of the main ways to check whether an a, a organization is being agile instead of doing agile is to see how well they align to those principles. And, and again and again within the principles, you see this principle of, of, of in, um, actually empowering people to, to act, uh, to take ownership, to show initiative, um, but also to make mistakes um, and learn from their mistakes. Um, so just bear in mind that empowerment comes with a risk, um, but the risk of not empowering your people is much higher than micromanaging them. Thanks, Johan. Um, <clears throat> Malini, would you like to complete? Just to round off everything that has been said, uh, Jane, thank you for asking this question. Uh, I think it's also important, you know, when we talk about how important is empowerment, um, we look at how to actually create a culture of empowerment. And Adrian, you touched on culture as being, um, you know, uh, a, a very relevant um, subject. Now, I've seen in some organizations where leaders aspire to be agile leaders, and they think they're actually empowering people, but they haven't actually put things in place, right? It's not enough to, to simply uh, throw people in at the deep end and say, okay, now you're empowered to make decisions. Uh, there's a few things that actually go hand in hand with that empowerment, such as transparency, clarity of purpose, you know, good communication, et cetera. And I'm sure we'll talk about that, uh, a these things a lot more um, over the course of, uh, of um, uh, this um, uh, this discussion, but uh, these are really important things to to keep in mind as well. All right, thank you very much, Malini, and thanks, Jane, for being live with us and raising that question. So, so, so Shitra, can we continue, please? Sure. Our next question is from Randall. From your experience, what are the common pitfalls agile leaders should avoid? So the common pitfalls, I, I see a hand from uh, Malini, from Adrian and Johan, and from Julian. Um, Randall, thank you so much for asking this question so I can vent my frustrations about my pet peeve. Um, I think my, my, my biggest frustration is uh, people jump to methods and processes and rituals before actually understanding, um, you know, uh, what, um, uh, Wasim referred to earlier as the agile mindset. You know, what sort of uh, a shift do you have to make in your mind before you actually start implementing uh, or determining which methods and processes to follow? So that's a pitfall I would um, urge you to look out for. All right. Okay. Good points made. Um, Adrian, please. Um, in in my book, Agile Beyond T, I, I, IT, I've got an entire chapter on this, um, and some of the some of the key ones is is that agility is not a thing. Uh, it's as uh, as as uh, Johan quite rightly pointed out. There's a whole set of agile values and principles in the Agile Manifesto, which for me is is the kind of the most coherent statement of what agility looks like there are others uh, but for me that's that's the most coherent and mm. there are four values there are 12 principles not one value and one principle um, and agility means that you really have to have all of those in an integrated uh, way of working whether you're talking about project level departmental level organizational level it doesn't matter uh, and that's that's a huge mistake. A lot of people get hung up, for example, on life cycle. And you've only got to look at debates on LinkedIn about that. So I think that's where I'll sort of stop at the moment, because I, I could just go through my entire chapter, but that would take about an hour. So I'll shut up. 
<laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Well, <clears throat> the the <clears throat> reference to your book was uh, was was visible. Will be in the chat so people can read that particular chapter. Uh, thanks, Johan. You're next, please. Yeah, I, I I just want to. I'm glad that Adrian actually mentioned the the the, the uh, values and principles once again, um, because that's really your check. Um, and I'm glad that he used the word all. Because some of the methods out there is really not safe to use if you want to be agile. Um, but my one thing I would say is is ensuring that your team can trust you. Yeah, um, I've I've seen too many times that 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 <laughs> leaders or managers tells us yes, but. You know, um, I can't trust my team. I mean, they, they must first show me that, that I can trust them before I you know, give them the, the reins to make these decisions. And the response is, no, that's not how it works. The only way that you can mm -hmm. trust somebody is to trust them and then to help them when they make mistakes, to not make those mistakes in the future and to learn from it. Absolutely agree. Trust always has an element of uncertainty, right? That's why it's trust and not certainty. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Johan. And let's hear from Julian. So I'll, I will get, continue with where um, Johan went on with trust, which comes from a, a, a pitfall of micromanaging. And, and um, Malini mentioned it earlier as well. So micromanaging is one of those pitfalls that we need to avoid very, very carefully. So we build a, build a culture of trust to empower our teams appropriately. But then also lack of feedback. Feedback is a very important um, concept within Agile. And if we don't allow feedback continuously and create an environment for feedback, we're not going to know, are we on track continuously? And then probably another one, um, which Malini mentioned earlier, was is lack of transparency. Um, lack of transparency of um, decision making, lack of transparency leads to, to mistrust a lot of the time. And, and, and it affects morale a lot of the time as well. So those are pitfalls that we definitely want to be avoiding as Agile leaders. Thanks, Julian, <clears throat> and thanks, panel, for for your answers. Now, I want Mr. Chitra, when I was calling the, our live viewers, to add a couple of more questions to our Slido. Did that actually happen? Did they take the challenge? <laughs> yes, of course. And we have a, a, another live question from Wondimo. Do we consider agility as one of the leadership styles, or can we practice agility in all leadership styles? Well, that's. Well, yeah, obviously I can see the hands coming up in lightning speed here from Vazim, <laughs> Johan, and Adrian. So let's uh, start with Vazim. Well, thank you very much, Mandimu, for, for this question. Excellent question. Um, and, and the simple answer is that there are different lenses that you can actually just put on and look at it from different aspects. Um, yes, you can look at it from a style of leadership that uh, you can you can have it over there. But at the same time, uh, I would agree with the second part of the question more than the first part itself, that uh, you need to have uh, agility in all leadership styles, styles itself. Uh, leaders have to be uh, be agile. Let's, let's put it this way, right? Uh, so they need to make sure that they can, they can show and they can demonstrate the transparency. They can, they can demonstrate the, the empowerment and they can demonstrate the, the, the trust and, the, and they can win the trust from their, their followers as well at the same time. So everything, all in all, I mean, uh, it, all, all of these characteristics actually make you an agile leadership, whether you are demonstrating, you're practicing the agility in your organization or not, or, or you're claiming to be an agile leader or not, but uh, you yourself, you are actually uh, behaving all these characters within yourself, uh, being, being the leader itself. So if you just, just talk about the three pillars of, of Scrum itself, um, adoption, inspection, um, uh, transparency, inspection, and adoption itself, uh, you would see that this is this is all that is needed uh, in terms of a leader itself. You need to be adopting to the situation, and you cannot be adopting to the situation if you don't inspect, inspect them, and you cannot actually inspect them if there is no transparency itself. So yes, it's, uh, it's something which all the leadership styles, uh, if you look at it from the other lens, let's say, uh, all the leadership styles have to have uh, actually agile kind of characteristics within them. And at the same time, 
looking at it from a different style, a different way, you can say that, yes, um, you can consider agility to be a style of leadership as well at the same time. But I would still tend to agree more with the second part of the question itself. All right. Thanks, uh, Fazim. And let's hear from Adrian. Um, I'm not going to repeat what Mozim said. He's absolutely nailed it for me. Uh, the only extension I'm going to make is uh, if great managers, leaders are choosing or adapting a particular leadership style to the moment, the person, the team, etc., it's they've got to choose the right adaptation. So part of the skill, part of the capability is 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 being able to recognize uh, in their agility uh, when to choose the right. Uh, leadership style to fit moment. Yeah, thanks, uh, Adrian, and thanks to Wandi Mu for um, for for bringing up your question here. And again, best greetings to our audience. Um, I think we have a lot of uh, viewers at the moment, um, and I would like to um, just see if we can get to the next question, Suchitra. Sure, we have a question, another live question from Belly. Is there a difference between agile leadership traits and the traditional method leadership traits? If so, what are those? Okay, so I see hands being raised by the panelists, and uh, let's start with Adrian. Um, no is a simple answer. I don't actually know what traditional leadership trait is. Uh, in, there's huge debates on on LinkedIn in the project management sphere about so-called traditional project management versus agile. I've no idea. I've, I've been in project management for 36 years. I've no idea what traditional project management is. Uh, it's just project management. So no, I I, I think there are there are just leadership <laughs> styles, and I refer to what Wasim said, and and also I've just said is you sim agility simply is uh, knowing when to choose the right leadership approach for the right for the right conditions um but no i i actually don't know what traditional leadership style is <laughs> right okay well johan sorry for from from for missing out on you in um no. in, in the previous question but um how about this one is there a difference <laughs> no, should, between I'll, agile leadership I'll, I'll answer the previous one while i'm answering this one I wanted to disagree right. with, with the rest of the panel. I wanted to say no. I think there are certain leadership traits and certain leadership styles that's incompatible with, with Agile. So if you want to be a tailorist, a militarist, um, or a bureaucrat, um, you're going to find it really difficult to adhere to all 12 of the Agile principles. So I do think that there's certain leadership traits and styles that's incompatible with being agile. Um, yeah, command and control, for instance. Yeah, you, you can't trust people and empower them to actually make decisions and say it's a self-management uh, managed team um, and then say to them, uh, but that's what you have to do. Yeah, that's what you have to choose. Mm. That's what you're working on at the moment. Um, yeah, so. For me, I, I think I, I, I differ a bit. All right. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Johan. And Julian, let's hear from you. Yeah, I, I also totally agree about this, uh, the, the concept of traditional leadership and agile leadership and is there differences, etc. There's subtle differences in some of it, but a lot of it is because of how the way we thought of traditional leadership, is, etc. Sort of goal setting is one of the ways that I could maybe um, show a difference where more traditional goal setting tend to be more longer term goal setting. And then we created a plan and we then developed, you know, we, we delivered against that particular plan, whereas in agile uh, goal setting, it tends to be a lot more um, short term goals. And then we adapt the plan as we're going along to make as, as our understanding of the creation of our product or our solution grows. So that's kind of one way, but it's not very different. I mean, it's just that we're working in shorter time scales more than anything else. Thanks. Thanks, Julian. All right, um, <clears throat> panel, we have more and more questions coming in and that are on the pile. So, Suchitra, let's just um, uh, continue. Sure. So, another live question from Faris. 
Can agile principles be applied to all types of projects? Okay. That is a live question coming from Faris. Thanks, Faris, for raising this. And I have here, uh, I saw Adrian and Johan raising their hands. And so why don't, uh, don't you start, Adrian? Yeah, I did wait a few seconds because it give my fellows a chance. But but actually, it's why I wrote the book um, called Agile Beyond IT, uh, because I firmly believe that you can uh, um, uh, adapt agility to any project in any sector, uh, whether it's IT-enabled projects or, or not. But there's, I did say can. I didn't say it was always possible because and again i come back to points that my colleagues uh, have certainly said around sort of culture um you need a supportive organizational culture in order for agility to work uh so one that for example will empower teams uh one in which uh so highly centralized organizations your hands quite right um you can't uh, easily have, well, you cannot have agility in those circumstances. So the answer to the question is yes, but only if the surrounding organizational landscape is supportive of agility. All right. Uh, thanks, Adrian. And let's hear from Johan. I think Adrian has, has nailed it. Um, uh, can you? Yes. Will you? Well, only if, you, if you're willing to change. <laughs> All right. Thanks. I'm, I'm, I still, I'm still struggling with, uh, to be honest, with uh, Adrian's answer on that. any project. I think there are something like in the mining industry where you have to refurbish over decades um, the environment back. I don't know how much agility is in there, but uh, yes, I'm talking directly to you. So please, uh, you guys, uh, comment on that one. Uh, okay. I... I think there are there are elements of agility. So again, you can certainly have the uh, 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 the leadership. You still in. I mean, I've I've worked in in mining, um, uh, and 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 I've seen where again you sort of trust teams and they they get on with it, and uh, you don't necessarily have to have control freak mentalities. You 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 have major projects uh, as well where you may they may be incredibly data heavy in because they need to be collecting a lot of information about what they're doing and lots of measurement etc cetera, etc cetera, but you can still have significant behavioral aspects of agility uh, in how the teams right. interrelate and act and trust them and everything so yeah it it will vary a great deal um but nonetheless you can certainly you you certainly can have potentially have agility but I come back to the basic point, and Johan, thank you for backing me up on that one. If you don't have the surrounding organizational landscape that supports it, it just isn't going to work. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. Johan, you raised your hand again. You want to, want to continue? Yeah, I, a long time ago, when we started down this agile road, I used to say to people, you know, uh, most probably you can't use agile to build a bridge until I had a good conversation with the civil engineer. And he said, you don't understand. When we're building bridges, we, we're using agile principles all of the time because no matter how much pre-planning you do, once you're on the ground, you actually have to deal with reality and make big changes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you can. And mine also. I mean, if you think there's, there's an aura of, of, of metal running in a specific direction and it changes direction, um, then what do you do? The geologist was wrong. You have to adapt. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that. Um, I think we have um, um, Malini. Is it correct that you raise your hand as well? I did, but what I wanted to say has now been covered. So <laughs> I, uh, I think it is right. possible to build a bridge as we walk on it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you very much. So let's um, let's um, get to our next question, uh, Suchito, please. Sure. We have a question from David in Scotland. How important is it not to be afraid to try new things as an agile leader? Okay. Why don't you start us off, uh, Vazim, with this one? 
Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, David, for an interesting question over here as well again. Um, so referring back to the previous answers that we have provided, um, you need to adopt. Uh, you need to adopt to uh, according to the situation itself. You need to adopt new ways of working. You need to adopt to different ways of managing things, etc. Uh, you need to have transparency in, in uh, your leadership styles, etc., and everything. So it is very, very important that you're not afraid of trying new things. Adoption itself, adaptation itself, sorry, adaptation itself is all about making sure that you can um, inspect the situation and accordingly you can you can bring in the new ways, bring in the, the correct ways of doing things as well. So uh, absolutely, very, very vital that you're not afraid of trying new things, let's say, for, for that sake. Uh, you have to make sure that you understand the situation and accordingly you put in the measures that will bring the desired results for you itself as a leader. Um, so yeah, I would 100% agree with that. All right, thanks, uh, Vazim and Julian, please. Uh, Julian, I guess. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, absolutely trying new things is very, very important. It's about risk taking, but it's about calculated risk taking all the time as well. We're measuring the benefits versus the risks that are involved in what we are doing. So we want to be able to continuously uh, make changes or, or, or not be afraid to, to, um, to change things or try new things, but measuring the benefits that can be achieved from that, uh, from the uh, to the risk that, that, that it poses to the environment as well. Thanks, Julian, and um, sorry for not pronouncing your, your first name correctly. <laughs> um, uh, let's hear from, from Johan then. Yeah, um, uh, if you want to please everyone, sell ice cream. <laughs> I, I, I learned actually that that's also wrong because you know, if, if, yeah. you, uh, if you sell ice cream, then you may not tolerant. cater for a for the lactose intolerant and the vegans. The, the point that I'm trying to make is that agile leadership means being bold. Um, part of your role as being of being an agile leader is to to further the 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 culture of agility within the organisation. And if you're gonna if you're gonna continuously stand back and say yes, but that's not that's not what the customer wants. You know they they, they want us to do everything and be flexible, and that's what we can't, uh, are going to try and do. It's not sustainable, incidentally, one of the agile principles. Yeah, you must work in a way that is constantly um, workable. You must be able to maintain that place. So sometimes um, yeah, it, it's, it's really important to stand up and say, no, um, this is not where we're going. Um, um, yeah, we can't accommodate, yeah, having everything as priority number one, for instance. And we see it a lot mm. in new organizations who are trying to, to adapt this. So they, they, they want the flexibility of, of, of being able to change on the fly, but they don't want to reprioritize. Yeah? So everything must be, yeah, something's got to give. All right, okay point and uh, Malini what's your view firstly I want to say uh, categorically that as a lactose intolerant intolerant vegetarian <laughs> I'm an advocate for agility David it, it occurred to me you know as I'm reading your question on the screen I would actually rephrase that uh, and I would say, how important is it to continuously learn and and improve ourselves, right? Because that's that's you know things that hold us back. Things you know, one of the things that drives fear is that we worry that we are going to fail, we are going to make mistakes, that you know um, we might disappoint people or people will think less of us. But every time something does not go well for us, right? Once we get over that emo initial emotional response to it, we actually grow and we, we become stronger. You know, so often uh, in the context of agility, we also use phrases like "fail forward," "fail fast," etc. So, you know, rather than focusing on on fear and and being afraid, I think it'll be good to, um, you know, just rephrase that as well. We are learning 
We're constantly learning. We're learning new things. We're improving. Thanks, Malini. And thanks, panel. <clears throat> and thanks to our live viewers um, watching us today. So, Suchitra, um, we have time for another question, I, I suppose. Yes, sure, Stefan. So we have a question from Clint. I am keen to introduce Agile in my organization. What do you recommend as first steps? Now, panel, keep that short, please. So we start with Julian, Johan, <laughs> Vazim, and Adrian, and then Malini. Well, I think the very first thing is to de de define agile in your in your um, in your environment. What does agile uh, in your environment mean? What are the skills and the behaviors that you're expecting from your team members, from your leadership, from the organization? Very very important. And then create a, a roadmap that helps you to to grow this kind of these skills. Very very importantly. And then I think you know, go for training. Training is really important. It helps you to understand the principles as we talked about very importantly. We have learned about the mindset that, that Agile is very importantly, but then there's the practices of Agile, the daily scrums, the sprint planning, the all of those those nice, lovely things that we talk about within Agile. And, and there's, you know, we need to be able to understand and balance them very, very importantly, but define it within your organization culture first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Okay, thanks. And uh, Johan, what's your view? Um, I think two important things to do is to, to help the organization to deal with the fear of uncertainty um, and learn how to, to deal with, with objections. Um, so I'm going to do the same as Adrian in, in my book, <laughs> Agile, the Manager's Guide to Creating Business Value. Um, in Chapter 2, I've got a little scenario. Um, and in fact, what I'll do is I'll, I'll send uh, the text so that you can uh, connect it to, um, to, to the chat. Um, so deal with fear, deal with objections. Very important to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, uh, Johan. <clears throat> and let's hear from Vazim. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Um, so 100% agree with Julian, uh, Julian and uh, Johan over here. Uh, just to add over here that when you're trying to introduce uh, Agile into your organization and your organization is not used to it, you need to make sure that you manage it as a change itself within the organization. That's the only additional uh, advice I would bring over here. That's it. Otherwise, Julian and, and Johan has covered everything. I couldn't agree more, Vazim to be honest, um, because <clears throat> I think this is not just introducing a piece of software or something. This is introducing or changing behavior. So it is a huge change project. But let's hear from uh, Adrian. Uh, I think the first thing is to win the board, um, the, the executive level, um, and they have to get agility, understand it, both head and heart. Because if they don't, um, it will never become sustained. And I, now there's a huge debate around, you know, in agile circles around this. But I personally have never seen agility sustained in an organisation. To pick up a point that Johan rightly made, if it's if it came from the bottom up, never seen an example of it being sustained. Um, it has to be led and the energy sustained from the top down. They have to fully engage, get right behind it. I think one of the links that's been put out is to Cotter's fantastic book on, on change. And, and his big thing is sustaining the energy of, of change. So if it's not, if you don't win the board first and they're not prepared to lead it and sustain it, um, then agility will last for a little while, be a fad and then die. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Thanks, Adrian. Malini, what's your view? Adrian, thank you for expressing that so eloquently. I just want to extend uh, what you said. Uh, you know, I, I think um, uh, if you're introducing Agile in an environment uh, that is not used to it, you need to be able to explain very or get the message across very clearly what yeah. is what needs to change and why that needs to change, right? Um, 
you know, there's a saying, if, if people understand why, they'll almost always sort of um, uh, get, get, get behind you on, the, on that journey. So that's actually really important. And it needs to start at the highest level in the organization and, and filter down. Um, there's, there's no other way to, to sustain that in an organization. I completely agree. All right. <clears throat> Maybe I can, can uh, add an example here, which I know. Um, there was a large auto, automotive maker in automobile maker in in Germany years ago. Wrote an email to all its employees saying, "From tomorrow onwards, we're agile." Now, that certainly doesn't work, and that's what pops through everybody's mind. But what he achieved with this, he made the term familiar as part of the organization and. This gave them much more speed to become an agile organization because if such such a big ship, like an automobile uh, uh, automotive producer, um, he can't just say that that's true, and he can't work in from from bottom up. It has, it has to be some some top down, as Adrian says, in uh, to, in to uh, convince the board, but making things possible making things uh, familiar so that people can use the term, can start doing that. I think in the end, it was an achievement, although it sounds so ab ab absurd when I heard for the first time, but just for my 50 cents to that uh, contribution to that. Um, I think um, we're done with the time. We have so many questions left. And um, I'm, I'm sure there will be another, there has to be another level up show uh, to, to cover all of these aspects. Uh, we see there's a lot of interest uh, that we have for agility here. So thank you very much for all the excellent questions we had today. Um, and those of you who have added the question um, and the life, um, watch your name will be in the credits if your question was selected. So panel, um, it's time for our closing remarks. And I would like to start with Julia. <laughs> Thank you, Stefan. I want to continue something that Adrian brought up earlier. It's about the, the debates that are happening on LinkedIn and all things. And those are really, really good because it starts to help to clear um, the concepts, the terminology that we're using. So for me, one of the big things of, of, of agile and agility and agile leadership is about continuous learning. It's about um, knowing that you know, you need to get feedback. You want to be looking for opportunities to develop your skills continuously. So be involved in all of these things. Le read the books. These books that, that are being quoted today are brilliant books and, and we need to be um, continuously learning. So, I, you know, that's something I'd like to add to the pot today. Thanks, Julian, and thanks for being a panelist today. Adrian, your closing remarks, please. Well, I'm, I'm going to finish with a with a with a with an equation, um, because building agility is it's building a, an agile capability, and I've been using this uh, equation, which I've recently slightly changed. Um, that capability equals knowledge plus experience plus judgment plus talent, and by talent I mean you know whatever you're kind of born with. Um, so if you if you're looking to either develop yourself uh, in in down a path to agility, and I like Julian's roadmap, excellent, um, or your organization then a path of agility, you might use that, that little equation. Capability equals knowledge plus judgment uh, plus um, experience plus talent. Thanks, Adrian. And Johan, please. Okay. Um, once again, thanks for participating and, and, and asking questions. Uh, without you, audience, uh, we wouldn't have these conversations. I would encourage you to be agile and stop doing agile. And as I normally do, I end with a quote. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. You change something. Uh, if you want to change something, build something new and make the ex existence of that model uh, so important that you can't but do that. Mm. So it's a little bit paraphrased, uh, but my uh, Buckminster Fuller is the author of that. Yeah. Ah, all right. Okay. Thanks, Johan. Uh, Vazim, please your closing remarks. 
Um, thank you very much. Thank you, APMG. Thank you, everybody, for, for this wonderful discussion that we have had today. And especially APMG continuing with this level up series. This is so educating and so informing and all that. Um, I would just um, quote over here, uh, present a quote from Nelson Mandela over here. He once said that education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. Um, and unless you educate others, you cannot actually win and, and, and achieve the objectives itself. So use that as a weapon. Um, all the uh, all the trainings that we have, Agile PM, Agile PM from Scrub for Scrum. We have Agile BA, Agile DS, and all these from um, the Agile Business Consortium and supported by the the APMG itself. These are the the weapons that you can use in order to bring the change in your environment as an Agile leader. Thanks, Vazim. Um, <clears throat> very insightful. Now the last word belonged to the belongs to the w women here on board. So, Malini, may we have your closing remarks, please? Once again, um, I've really enjoyed this discussion. I love the way, um, you know, the members of the panel sort of build on each other's um, contributions. And thank you for the wonderful questions that have been sent in. Uh, I'd just like to draw everyone's attention to, um, you know, the wonderful training offerings from um, APMG that relate to Agile. But as a business relationship manager, I think it's also important if you want to be a good uh, or an effective Agile leader, consider, uh, you know, consider other uh, knowledge areas that will also be helpful. You know, so business relationship management is the obvious one, but one of the panelists also referred to change management. So think about how uh, those disciplines can also help you, uh, you know, as a leader. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, uh, Malini. Um, and uh, also with us the whole time was Suchitra, our question master. Suchitra, may I have your closing remarks, please? Sure, Stefan, and thank you. A big thank you to all our panelists and, of course, our viewers. Some amazing questions and some great advice. And like Stefan mentioned, we will definitely be looking forward to another episode of Agility and this topic again. So we will get your questions answered for sure. Yeah, thanks, uh, Suchitra, and many thanks again to the panel. I really enjoyed the discussion today. I had my fun, uh, obviously. Um, and uh, by the way, to our, all to our viewers, over on our website, you can search for answers to more than 1,500 questions. It's a comprehensive free resource, and it connects you with more than 170 experts from around the world. If video isn't your first choice, you can also listen to the audio versions of this show on your preferred podcast platform. Please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really helps new folks discover our content. Next Friday, on 21st of April at 2 p.m. GMT, it is all about chartered project management, how to become a chartered project manager. There are so many different roads to achieve this status, so tune in to find out which one is most suitable to you. And on Monday, the 24th of April, at 8 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, we will dive into how to become an Agile change agent. So there we go, we have another Agile topic. It's a very important role for every change process. I recommend you subscribe to our show, where you will join more than 45,000 viewers in the meantime and we will send you a personal summary of what's coming up and how you can become a panelist yourself and level up your career with APMG. Thanks, everyone. See you on Monday. Tschüss.